on the show tonight. Chris Hemsworth is here. Yeah, he, he's the star of the new whaling movie in the heart of the sea. Oh, wait a minute. There she blows. show tonight as well as Chris. It's the first time appearances from uh, comic Kevin Bridges, uh, director, <laughs> director Ron Howard, and the comedy legend that is Lily Tomlin. So excited, yes. And, and we'll be getting in the Christmas mood with music from Blake and Dame Shirley Bassey. Yeah? Your actual Dame Shirley will be over there and there. She will? No, seriously, it's Christmassy. Now, of course, uh, Chris and Ron are here with the new film, In the Heart of the Sea, where Chris plays a fearless whale hunter. Mm. <laughs> uh, the story takes place on a ship called the Essex and was the original inspiration for the novel Moby Dick. <laughs> though, uh, <laughs> though, funny enough, if you Google the words Essex and Dick, this is what you get. <laughs> It's a very exciting story. No, it really is a very exciting story. Uh, the whale sinks the ship and leaves the crew marooned in a lifeboat. Yes, to survive, they resort to cannibalism. Awful. Here's that lifeboat three weeks later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, couldn't eat another sailor. Uh, let's get the guests on. First up, at the age of only 29, this Glaswegian comedian has had a remarkable rise to success and last year sold more tickets than any other comic in the UK. Please welcome Kevin Bridges! There he is! Hello. How are you, Kevin? Hi! You're very welcome. You're very nice to see you. He went from child star to become one of the world's most successful directors, making Splash, Parenthood, Apollo 13, The Grinch and A Beautiful Mind. Now he brings us in the heart of the sea, it's the Oscar-winning Ron Howard! exploded onto the big screen as Thor and has gone on to incredible success with the Avengers, the Huntsman and the James Hunt biopic Rush. It is the fabulous Chris Hemsworth, everybody! That's it! Lady is one of America's greatest comedy talents. She's the star of Nashville, 9 to 5, All of Me, seven Emmys, two Tonys, and a Grammy to her name. She's now Oscar tip for her new movie, Grandma. It is a huge pleasure to welcome the one and only Lily Tomlin, everybody! Were you guys, did you all meet backstage? Was there kind of showbiz mingling behind a curtain? Quick, a quick mingle. Okay. A little bit, yeah. Well, we got yeah. a lot done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of projects lined up. Yeah, <laughs> lovely, lovely. No, because Ron and you've never, have you never worked together, Ron and Lily? We've never worked together. I met one time because I went to see a, a one-woman show that Lily did many years ago. I don't remember the name of the show, but in it was this, you would have, you took this picture and you were playing this character. They went, soup, ot, ot. Soup. Yeah. What was the name of the show? The Search for Signs of Intelligent Life. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you should really get in one of his films. Oh, they, I'm going to be in his next one. They do well. <laughs> they, Ron Howard, do you know off the top of your head how much money your films have made? <laughs> well, I actually don't. I, I, well, I, I can tell you. <laughs> uh, Ron Howard, this is incredible. Ron Howard's films have made, so far, right. three and a half Billion dollars. <laughs> Billion dollars. <laughs> Sounds like I need a conversation with my lawyer and. Uh, <laughs> uh, you should start your own country or something, because that's a lot of money. Yeah. Um, and 
Kevin, there, I was, I was saying in the introduction, I mean, your success is extraordinary now. You know, I'm sitting beside the guy that's pulled on three and a half billion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> My success has been all right. <laughs> Sorry to bring you down. You walked out here high as a kite, and now it's like, oh. <laughs> but no, but you must get stopped in the streets and stuff like that now. Aye, usually by people collecting for charity. <laughs> <laughs> well, I get asked to sign 25 copies, uh, 25 pirate copies <laughs> of my own DVD. <laughs> takes balls, man. <laughs> of course uh, I signed them. Okay. Of course you do. Now, Lily, can you understand anything Not Kevin said? No. <laughs> I, I got something about balls at the end. <laughs> Is that what he said? Yeah, he said balls. Yeah, he did say balls. No, can you seriously not understand? Not very much. I, I was going to kind of question him as he was going along, but... <laughs> <laughs> I actually tried a show in America. I've done one gig. A guy complimented me, approached me after the set, and he goes, hey, man, are you actually Scottish? And, <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yes. And he goes, fuck, man, your English is pretty good. <laughs> Because <laughs> uh, we're now talking of Scottish, because Chris Hemsworth, you did Scottish in The Huntsman. Uh, yeah, well, it was, it was a Celtic vibe. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I had a great reviewer tell me that it was the worst Glaswegian accent since The Fat Bastard. <laughs> I wasn't doing Glaswegian, though, so that was in my defence. It, it was a Celtic that, vibe. It was a Celtic, Celtic fantasy, Snow White, world, Scottish-influenced kind of accent. So that gives you a whole broad range to do whatever the hell you want. <laughs> But that, I can, I hear little bits in there. You get it? I understood little bits. It was pretty, yeah. It, it is I, I understood thick. little bits. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> the compliments are flying in. I just need a laugh. Because it sounded, I, was... I think that's why we die so young in Scotland. Because it's just exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> it takes so much more there. effort. You need to translate in your head and have then you, go. Have you, have you performed in Australia, though? <laughs> yes, yes, I've done. We love you. You just say that. I swear to God, I love you. You know, I played Australia. I've, I've not played Scotland, but I played Australia. And by the reaction, I'm amazed that I went over at all. What do you mean? I'm just saying they seem to understand Kevin very well. <laughs> but we're not in Australia now. No. <laughs> <laughs> and even th I'm having trouble with Chris a little bit. <laughs> can, can you understand me? I can understand you. Well, that's the main thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll talk. Of course it is. Yeah. I find there's references as well. You need to change certain references when you perform. Mm. Like... Are you talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> You bring us such a sweet, lovely, funny film, Grandma. It oh, opens next you. Friday, the 11th. And is Grandma quite close to you? Well, um, she could be. Yeah, many things about it. I, I drove my own car. <laughs> <laughs> Never late for work. <laughs> no, no, right. no it's, a, it's, a, it's a very uh, funny, interesting kind of important movie. So, in, in broad strokes, what is the story of Grandma? Well, the story is uh, Grandma is a lesbian poet, <laughs> feminist lesbian poet, who's been... Uh, this is not a film that would become a blockbuster like mm -hmm. in your terms. Well, I'm maybe. not talking to you. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> 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 uh, and, uh, and there's a lot of stuff has gone on. She's been in a relationship for 38 years, and her partner has died like a year or so before, a couple of years. And her granddaughter shows up on her doorstep and has become pregnant and needs an abortion. And so then the story is kind of a road trip. I mean, the grandmother's very cantankerous and ornery and, and rails against injustice and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and it is, but it, it, the idea of having a funny, sweet abortion road movie is so unlikely. <laughs> And, and yet it is. It's, it's a new genre. It, we is. Look for... it, is. it is kind of a new genre. <laughs> yeah. It is. Never to be repeated. <laughs> no, got... it's a, I love the film. It's very wonderful. No, it really is. Yeah. And you are terrific at it. This is a, a little clip, and this is the start of the road trip uh, where there's a problem with the car. Oh, God. I didn't wake you up again, did I? No. Oh, good. So glad. 
She's already pregnant. Grandma. Just saying, I see the hormones popping. <laughs> no ideas, we're good. Here, give it a try. Oh, working. Oh, nice tunes. Hey, listen, thanks. Anytime. Make it to the shop and get it checked out. Uh, it runs good. Hey, congratulations. Okay, good. <laughs> now, I don't want to jinx it. That's a terrible thing. You, you must hate this. But with Grandma, yes. there is that terrible phrase, after buzz, about it, which you must be aware of. Yes, I, I am. Yeah. I mean, I've certainly been exposed to it. Yes. So how do you manage your expectations? Well, I don't have any expectations, truly. What I would like to do, if I uh, did get nominated and I did, and I did win, assuming I'll be there, uh, I would like to have a, you know, a bo I'd be very humble, of course. Of course. And uh, <laughs> I'd have a box built with, uh, you know, they'd wheel the box out and and I would open it up and there'd be everything else in there, Emmys and Tonys and Tonys. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what are, what's the other thing that's in there? Grammys. Yeah. Grammy, yeah. Yeah. only one Grammy. And so then I would, but I would open it and there'd be a, a niche prepared in there. <laughs> and I'd take the Oscar and put it in there. <laughs> but I, I don't think it's going to and Jane, your partner, you, you've written together for years. You've... Well, Jane is really the writer. I'm not, not much of a writer. Is she a bit miffed that you've now wandered off and made a film with somebody else? No, she's quite pleased. <laughs> <laughs> she's quite pleased because it's uh, pretty successful. But working with people you're close to, like Chris, you and Liam, are you finally going to be in a film together? Your brother, Liam, obviously. Uh... Well, I, I don't know. We're looking. It'd be nice if the right thing came along, sure. Oh, so I read that you'd found something. You haven't found something. No, no. Wow, what have we found? <laughs> Ron? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's an abortion look. road movie. <laughs> <laughs> Two brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the father? <laughs> and now, was he also up for Thor? Uh, he was, yeah. I auditioned and then didn't get the part, and then they auditioned him, and he basically got down to the last, like, four people, and then didn't get it, and then I came back in and... And how was that at home? <laughs> 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 That's like real sibling rivalry. Yeah. It's like, yeah. <laughs> uh, was it all right? It must have been a bit weird. A bit orcs. Oh, uh, we, we still don't talk that much. <laughs> <laughs> but we never did. No, no. It was fine. Yeah, I don't know whether he's bitter or not, but he did post this picture of his... This is real. Oh. This is his dog uh, with a chew toy, which looks familiar. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Off. Yeah, that hammer was delicious. It was. Because, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ron Howard, you work with your family, like, all the time. Whenever, whenever I can. My brother Clint's an actor. My father, Rance, is, 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 is still acting in his 80s and working all the time. I love to, I love to work with him. And your, your mom, sadly, is no longer with us, but uh, she did get a part in, was it Apollo 13? She's Apollo 13, she had a really, a really nice role, uh, which almost didn't happen because I got this call from my dad um, and, uh, and he said, you know, I just read the rewrite on Apollo 13. And I said, yeah, and he said, there's a new part in there. I said, yeah, there is. <laughs> Jim Lovell's mother. I said, yeah, she's got a nice scene. I said, yeah, you know what would be really good for that? Who do you think, Dad? Your mom. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I uh, boy, I don't know. Uh, I'd have to audition her. <laughs> and, and he said, well, uh, fine. And, and, and so, uh, uh, and my mom was all for that. And she said, I don't, I don't want to do it if Ronnie doesn't think I can do it. <laughs> so, uh, I went over to her, their house and we worked through the scene and she was great. And we did it in a couple of takes and she was, she, I've never been prouder. And she was, even got written up in the New York Times Review. And it was a, huh. wound up being a great moment. She played oh, wow. Jim Lovell's mother. It would have been worse if you hadn't given her the part off the audition. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this well, isn't going to work out. I'll sorry. tell you what's really bad. My dad's an actor. I cast him whenever it's uh, appropriate, you know. And here's the call I've had to make to him. Hey, Dad, you know, <clears throat> you, you did great. Uh, but, you know, the movie was a little long. <laughs> <laughs> and next would be, am I in it at all? <laughs> Maybe in the extended DVD cut. <laughs> 
<laughs> so that's a tough call. But he's a he's an he's an old war horse. He understands. And, and uh, Kevin, your dad, because you started so young, your dad was really kind of important in your career. My dad, I used to drive me to the gigs because I was I was too young to perform in the clubs, so they'd like make. If as long as I brought along a parent, which is pretty uncool. <laughs> <laughs> Having to bring a note in saying that you're all right to go on stage in these comedy clubs. <laughs> and he used to drive me everywhere, all over Scotland. But you've been very nice. You've rewarded them handsomely. You gave your parents a lovely trip. Was it the Orange Express you sent them on? Aye, my dad's always had a thing for trains. He always wanted to go on the Orient Express. So for their anniversary a couple of years ago, I got them the trip. And my dad is the only guy who's ever missed the train. <laughs> 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 he got off at Innsbruck station to send me a text and he's just to like, talk to me on the phone when I've been on trains and going, Dad, I'm on the train, the signal's pretty bad. So he presumes that you cannot send a text from a train. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I mean is I'm driving through like cross country and <laughs> so he gets off before the train's due to depart and he starts sending me this big long text just going, son, We've been winding and dined. I'm gazing at the Tyrolean mountains. And he's done the spell check on Tyrolean. <laughs> and I'm reading this text and I'm kind of filling up, just going, oh, he's really had a good time. And it just goes, shite. <laughs> <laughs> and it's meant the train has just left. Can you call me? <laughs> so I'm like, it's a wind up, so I've ignored it. And then an R text came in going, call me, son. <laughs> so I phoned him, it does the international ringtone. And he's going, oh, I just got off to send that text. Your mum's on there. She's got the passports to watch. I'm in Innsbruck station. And I was going, well, you need to go to information and try and explain to somebody. And he goes, oh, but they don't know what I'm saying. They're, I don't speak any German no, or English. <laughs> so they just think it's just an excited Scottish guy that's seen the Orient Express. <laughs> and they've eventually, he's explained what's happened. And they got in a taxi and he had to... They contacted somebody on the train to pull in at this kind of regional stop, and my dad was a high speed sort of chase. <laughs> <laughs> he, he managed to catch the train and he got on and he got a standing ovation. Oh, thank you. <laughs> 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 Chris and Ron, your movie, as I was saying to you back there, it's such an epic tale. It's a real beast of a film. In the Heart of the Sea, it opens here on Boxing Day, the day after Christmas. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, obviously, it's a Ron Howard film, but this was your baby, Chris. You had this script. So how did, how did this happen? Uh, we, we had just done Rush, and, and I had, um, in the Heart of the Sea, with uh, Paula Weinstein brought it to myself and my manager, Will Ward, uh, and we basically were looking for a director, and... Um, I think we were in the ADR booth yeah. and you said, if you have anything else you want to do, let me know. And I said, actually, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and hand, hand in the script and said, yeah, if you're not sick of me, let's go again. And yeah. we did. But, yeah. like, I, I'm just, like, I don't have a great work ethic. I think I would have read this script and thought, oh, it's very good, but it sounds really hard to make. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really I, could not be arsed. I actually... I, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I, I, you know, there, there is a, an ambitious uh, streak that I have and that I, and that I, uh, and that I follow. And, look, it's, this was kind of, of a life, ex you know, experience m making this kind of movie, and it's a, sort of a, per a personal adventure. I'm not a very naturally adventuresome person, but the movies take me into these places. I learn a lot that I wouldn't uh, otherwise. And, and I actually, when I first read it, I sort of thought, well, this is, this is, they're just trying to sort of find a way to kind of reboot Moby Dick, and it is very hard and very challenging, and I didn't realize it was based on real events. So when I did, and I started thinking of it, and I said, well, it's not a monster movie. This, is the, this whale is not like the shark in Jaws. It's not a predator. This is more like King Kong. This is like a force of nature awakened by man, man's greed. Uh, and I felt like there were a lot of themes that were, that were contemporary and very relatable, surprisingly relatable, and, and yet also the big epic adventure story. Well, is the, the clip really captures the scale of the film. This is Chris Hemsworth taking on the whale. Never seen a whale do that. It's the line. Take the wheel. It's the ramsel. You were the other end of the line to the foremast. I sir. As I live and breathe, he's mine.
sometimes you know, like other stuff happens as well. You're like, that would be enough. You go home. Thank you very much. That was yeah. very good. That's just a turning point. <laughs> yeah. in, uh, in Extraordinary. Yeah. Extraordinary. So is that a real whale? No, no, CGI whale. No whales were, were injured or pestered. In the, in the, in the, in the, in so, uh, so that was a model that was made? It was a complete CGI. You know, look, technology was such a factor in this movie. A lot of things we shot in the way that, that you know, the movie's been made for, for 100 years. But I wouldn't have, have tackled this movie if you had to use a giant puppet or something like that, where, you, where the audience has to kind of suspend their disbelief. Yeah. After seeing Life of Pi, I realized that this technology was there and that, and, that, and that we could make a movie that was totally immersive and let this character have its due. Let it be a living, breathing force. And for Chris, it must be odd you hear about all the CGI and you're thinking, CGI in my arse. I did all this. <laughs> I, you, you really had to do it. You had to jump and fall yeah, yeah, yeah. and swim. And... It, yeah, it was one of the, I think, the most sort of physically challenging things I'd ever done. I mean, we had to... Um, as you see, all kinds of action and so on, and, and then navigating the ship and learning to row the whale boats and so on and throw harpoons, and then there was the weight loss sort of thing we were all going through. Oh, yeah, this picture. This picture's been everywhere, the, this of you. Uh, no, we're, we're, <laughs> Who's <Some>. that? <laughs> That's Liam. Um, so... <laughs> He likes to drink. <laughs> <laughs> but to get down to that weight, so what are you, yeah. you know, I, I read somewhere, was it 500 calories or something? We, well, we started at one diet and then slowly each week dwindled down to about five, 600 calories by the... And what is that? Like physically, what, uh, what are you eating that is five, 600 calories a day? Like a piece of fish and some lettuce or... If you have, like, it's funny, you do all these sort of trade-offs. You'd be like, if I have this piece of chocolate, then I won't be able to have the fish, but then I can have this. And it's all this, like, crazy kind of insanity which, which happens. And, of course, uh, Kevin, you can relate to this film because you actually, you own a boat, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> you own a boat! Yes. I thought you were going to say because I've seen Free Willy. Oh. <laughs> I do have a boat. I'm fully aware of the dangers of the ah. sea, man. I had to make a distress call this summer. And Loch Lomond, because we get a we get, <laughs> we get a bag of cans wrapped in the propeller on the boat. <laughs> we're, having, we're having a few beers. It was a maiden voyage, and um, my mate complained that his beers were room temperature. Some other, which is obviously potentially fatal on a boating trip. And, um, my other buddy suggested that we tie the bag of beers onto one of the ropes and throw it off the boat into the water. Great idea. And then we forgot about the beers, we were driving off and the engine failed, we never knew why. Had to phone up the SOS dude. He came out, he dives under, comes back up going, there's a box of Magnus and an odd bins back there. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's <laughs> Now, Kevin Bridges, ladies and gentlemen, he has a DVD out now. It's out now. Yes. It's called A Whole Different Story. It is. And is this the tour that you're just finishing? Yes, just finishing up this So one. there's 11 more dates. 11 more dates to go. And so then... don't buy it before you go to see one of those 11 dates. Yeah, you're not supposed to say that, Graham. But yeah, don't buy it before you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I had to lose weight to fit into the eye. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been Kevon. <laughs> It was, uh, it was recorded in Glasgow two months ago. So. Oh, right. And it's very much the story of how your life has changed yes. with success. Because you're now, you live in quite a ritzy area now. Yes. Well, yes. Not quite <laughs> L.A. or anything. No. I, I live in Glasgow, but I live in a nicer bit of Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we've got a, a very quick clip. This is you uh, talking about some of the people you meet in your life. I never knew you were going to show a clip or I wore a different suit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, lots of people have tough gigs. Lots of stand-up comics yes. talk about tough gigs. But you've played prisons, haven't you? Or at least a prison. Yes. At the start, a very tough... Like, these days, you're playing to, like, what's that, 10,000 people, so somebody's going to laugh. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> at the start, I, a prison, that's right, I had a guy... A guy stood up. It was a gig for inmates in this prison in Scotland. And a guy stood up about ten minutes into the show and just went back to his cell. So that's <laughs> like... <laughs> 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 
Or this guy's shite probably to finish my life sentence. <laughs> Say a gig in a prison. Was... <laughs> but no, because Lily Tomlin, you've also done a gig in a prison. I have many it's times. Place yeah. to be, you but you also was a chat show in a prison. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, because you would have you would have scary times in prison. Well, I, they were they could be construed as scary. I mean, what happened is uh, one time I was playing at uh, a, a women's prison in in California, and the, they wore regular clothing, so you didn't know who was an inmate or who wasn't. You know. Uh, and, and Jane was with me, my partner, and she's very chatty and gets to talking to everybody. And she was having a, a long conversation with a woman who killed her boyfriend over a peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> and she found that out toward the end of the conversation. But, and I had, you had to play for the newcomers who've been in like 15 days or less, and they're just like civilians. Mm. And then you play for the hard timers at the end of the night. That's brutal. And then you uh, play for the psychiatric. <laughs> In the middle of the day, like in a sunroom, I'd stand on the table almost, you know, and try because there was no stage or anything. And uh, there were people, there was a woman sitting there, she'd like, uh, she's smoking, and, and then she'd go all of a sudden, she'd be watching me, listening to me, and then she'd go, <laughs> 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 And she'd get up and run, there were two doors, it was like a farce. So she'd run out that door, and next she'd come back in this door and sit on that side of the house and do the same thing in a few minutes. So anyway, that was mild compared to the hard timers, but there was a young girl with a pleated skirt and brown hair, long, heavy, rich, you know, rich girl's hair like I feel that people have. And uh, <laughs> she says, uh, Lily, I'm gonna review you for the prison paper. <laughs> 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 and I said, oh my gosh, well, okay. And uh, she said, don't worry, I'll be kind. <laughs> and she turned out to be one of the Manson women. <laughs> That's a story. And I have her review still in my files. Oh, was it kind? No. <laughs> <laughs> not in my book. <laughs> not kind enough. No, it's, not kind enough. Why were you in prison, Chris Hemsworth? <laughs> Chris, asked the question that you start the show for. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, it was research. I did a, a movie about a guy. It was research. <laughs> I'm in for research. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm research. I'm research. <laughs> I'm research, robbery. Yeah. Go ahead, do you have a story to tell? Because no, I, I'm still taken. I'm trying to listen to Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> and a couple of stories well, back, you kept. It was the story about. Uh, I don't even know what the story was about. <laughs> you were saying like you kept saying Beals, Beals. So, what is that? Uh, Beals. Be Beals. Beers. 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 Oh, beers. Beers. <laughs> beers. Beers. All right, beers. so that was about that's, beers. Okay. That's a beer. <laughs> beer. And then just now when you were talking about uh, playing a prison, yes. you said, and this day, I can't imitate it. It's no, go sad. For it. No, I can't. It's like, I'll try, I'm going to try, but it's going to be you embarrassing. You can go through, Chris, and you can try your Celtic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you be an said, <laughs> and this day, this gay stands up, and I'm thinking, well, you must say a gay person stood up. Oh, no, no. Oh, it's not a guy. Quite... I finally got that it was a guy. A guy. Yeah. One vowel away. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was prison. Maybe it was prison gay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I actually quite a good gig in, the, in the prison. I had quite a good show. Because I, I used to have a routine about... <laughs> You're looking at me the way the dog looks at me. <laughs> Yeah. Is he saying out? <laughs> Is he saying treat? <laughs> I done this joke about how like the set, like, attempted murder, you get a lesser sentence than you get for murder, but you still tried it. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you weren't very good at it. <laughs> <laughs> In my opinion, you should get double the sentence for making an, an arse of it, right? So I this joke and, and there's these murderers pointing over at attempted murderers going, ah, that's you, mate, that's you. <laughs> Is that strange? <laughs> so, what did I just say there, Chris? If you just want to. <laughs> Murders. Murders. Did you get that? Murders. No, I didn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> you said murders? It was like murders. Murders. Murder. 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 You are. Murder. You are. Right. Oh, oh my Why God. were you in prison, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> My <laughs> <laughs> and, um, uh, well, they go to prison. So, no, I was researching a film.
uh, and we had to go in and uh, basically see what the inside of a prison looked like and speak with prisoners who were willing to talk to us. And, um, and I walked in and I remember thinking, and I had, my, I had my ponytail, long blonde hair, and I had a hat on. <laughs> and the wardens... <laughs> <laughs> Lily knows where this is going. <laughs> So I spent the night. <laughs> and the warden said, you can't wear your hat and so on. And I said, oh, OK, no worries. And I thought, oh, shit, they're going to they're gonna know who I am. And then I thought, oh, no, they don't get Thor in here. They're not going to watch movies. And I don't know, I've never been to prison. So I assumed that. And the moment I started walking through the cells, and it's like H block of this thing, and it's all just kind of, the, you know, cell upon cell and so on. And I just start getting heckled. And it's like, yo, yo, Thor's here, man. Yo, Thor, yo, Thor's here, Thor, Thor. <laughs> Where the, where's your hammer, man? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to, like, blend in and, you know, research. <laughs> and just getting heckled left and right about, you know, come spend some time in my cell, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I got my long hair. And, uh, You'll do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so that was, uh, I, it wasn't a whole lot of research, more just yeah. kind of... <laughs> you survived it. Yeah, yeah. And, and listen, uh, very, very briefly, we're running out of time. Uh, Ron, we must, we must mention where we found you first. Uh, happy days. Ah. Uh, <laughs> because it, you weren't in it for the whole time. It ran for years, but you... Well, I, I, I stayed with it through my contract, but by then I knew I wanted to be a director, and I, so I left to pursue that full-time at the end of my contract, which was seven and a half seasons. Wow. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it ran for, what, nine Went years? Went on another four seasons yeah. after that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And what's odd now is that one of the things it's, it's really remembered for is coming up with that phrase, jumping the shark. Uh -huh, yes. So yes. if people don't know, uh, can you ex explain the jumping the shark episode? Well, you know, the show had, had gone and become uh, really a, you know, number one hit, very successful. And along with it, there's sort of a culture around it and, and the, sort of the mythology of the Fonzie character. This started off as kind of a normal guy and he kept getting more and more powerful, tapping on jukeboxes, snapping his fingers, girls would run, everything would happen. <clears throat> and, and, but audiences loved it, and it was really working. And so finally they decided that they would start off season, I think it was probably season five or six, with the biggest thing ever. Fonzie was going to water ski and jump over a white shark. <laughs> and, you know, so he had Henry out in this jacket. I, did, I loved it because I, I was driving the boat. Yeah, like... I thought driving the boat was fun. <laughs> and Henry happened to be a very good skier and loved skiing. We did it. But uh, people tended to think years later that that was the point where the show had kind of gone beyond the pale. And, 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 and so then they started saying, uh, you know, that's, that was the happy days. Is jumping the shark was the moment where it sort of reached its high. And, um, and, 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 and sort of came down. The reality is it remained a number one show for a long time, and after I left the show, it was a top ratings getter. And so I don't know, I don't know how accurate it was, yeah. but jump the shark. No, it is awful where a TV show just drags on for series after series. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's really bored to death. <laughs> time for music. And we're going all Christmassy now. This is, this is the first little bit of Christmas on the show. Uh, this year, best-selling classical boy band Blake have done something really special to perform a beautiful new version of Christmas Song. They've teamed up with a musical legend. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Blake and Dame Shirley Bassey! Yes, no! They know that 
Right side is on his way. He's on his way. He's loading lots of toys and goodies on his way. Oh, that's right. And every mother's child is gonna spy. To see if reindeer really know. Many times, many ways. Merry Christmas to you. They know that Santa's on his way. He's loaded lots of toys and goodies on his sleigh. And every mother's child. He's gonna spy to see if reindeer really know how to fly. And so I'm offering this simple phrase to kids from one to ninety-two. Although it's been said many times. Now that's Ben Shirley Bassey, you'll now greet you all. Shirley, marvellous. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Perfect. 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 Okay. And Blake, I know there's a, there's a Humphrey. Humphrey. And there's, I know there's an Ollie. I'm Ollie. Ollie and yeah. Steve. Steve. It's a bit dull after the Ollie and the Humphrey. <laughs> <laughs> and Steve. Um, and the Shirley. Steve. <laughs> and Dame Shirley Bassey. And now, <laughs> you're Dame Shirley Bassey, but I bring this drink. Thank you very much. Not, Hey, uh, can I just say, I don't mean to slag off the other guests, but no one else brought drinks. <laughs> uh, uh, th this, is, this is a your cocktail, Dame Shirley. It's yeah. a cocktail named after me. Absolutely. Uh, Dame Shirley the Bassey cocktail with champagne, vodka, and ra strawberries. Raspberries! <laughs> I think you said rat poison. I was like, yeah, that's, that's quite a cocktail, yeah. <laughs> we had, we had with a, a Mex chaser. And real, and real gold. Real gold, of course, yeah. with your finger. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, we had it at our, at our album launch. Real gold. And we thought we should have a drink. Yes, you know, no. appropriate. And they, yes, and they okay, created can, this. Can we drink now? Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can we drink now? <laughs> now can we drink? Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Mm. Mm. Sorry, audience. I was only. Without, uh, sorry. <laughs> you, can have, you can have a sip of mine if you like. <laughs> <laughs> if you're quick. <laughs> 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 now that single, that single is out on the 18th of December, and this is special because if God was good and it did become uh, a number one, a Christmas number one, it would be your very first Christmas number one. Yes, yeah. I've never done a Christmas carol ever. Have you never done a Christmas song? No, before? it's my very first. So You've missed a trick there. <laughs> <laughs> the record company, for some unknown reason. Every time I said, please, can I do a Christmas album? And even when I had number one and number two in the head parade, and they said, no. And I think they were afraid because of the, the voice, 
They didn't. They couldn't imagine me singing Silent Night. Silent <laughs> Night. <laughs> 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 It is also what's special. You are both raising money for charity with this yep. record, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, we are. So, uh, Blake, who are you raising money for? Well, we are very, we're ambassadors of Variety, the children's charity, which is a, a, an amazing charity, and Dame Shirley is uh, Noah's Ark in Cardiff, which... Yes, both, both my charity, charity children. uh, children's hospital in Cardiff. They have room for parents to stay overnight. Oh, that's really yes. special. Yeah. Well, it's good yes. luck with the single. I really hope... I really hope that you the night the first time ever you are. It'd be terrific. Hey, before we go, just time for a visit to the big red chair. Who's there? Hello, sir. Hi there. Hi, what's your name? It's Ricardo. Okay, what do you do? I am a facilitator on creative thinking and innovation. Hmm. <laughs> 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 oh, I want to in that chair. Okay, uh, uh, let, let's try another one. Who's this? Who's this? <laughs> oh, hello. Hello. Hi, what's your name? Hi, I'm Joe Popham. Joe Popham. Okay. <laughs> That is your first name and surname, right? Yes. Okay, good. Otherwise, it's a really weird name. <laughs> Joe Popham Smith. Um, so, Joe Popham, um, <laughs> where, where, where are you from, Joe Popham? Um, Bookham in Surrey. Joe Popham of Bookham. <laughs> what, do, what, do you, what do you do? Uh, well, primarily a mum of three teenage kids, but also cabin crew. Or flight attendant for the Americans. Uh oh. Does your story involve anyone on our couch? Nope. Okay, good. Let's go. Uh, on, on we go with this story. Uh, so, quite a few years ago, back in the 90s, um, we were on a flight and we were told we we're expecting a VIP passenger. And the VIP's manager came on board into the premier cabin, obviously and to prepare the seat for his employer. And with that, uh, we were told it was Michael Jackson's manager. So he brought on all his things, was getting everything ready for him, and he had the red thriller jacket. And he hung it up in the first class wardrobe, and we were told to make sure to look after it and that nobody unauthorized came on board. So when he went off, I was always a bit naughty, and I thought it'd be really fun to get the jacket <coughs> out of the wardrobe. And as I was dancing around the cabin doing the thriller dance, <laughs> the manager and Michael Jackson came back on board early than I expected and caught me dancing around the cabin in the red thriller jacket. <laughs> Is it for tonight? Please, a huge thank you to my guests, Blake and Dame Shirley Bassey, <laughs> Kevin Bridges, Ron Howard, Chris Hemsworth, and Lily Tomlin. Join me next week with pop phenomenon Sia, acting great Kurt Russell, Oscar-winning director Quentin Tarantino, and comedy superstar Tina Fey. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye.